Time for the Angels Win Podcast. It is episode number 32. I'm Victor Rojas along with Jeff Stardart and Chuck uh, Richter. So glad you could join us. Happy uh, Friday, everybody. Happy uh, home opening uh, series for the Angels. They will kick things off a little bit later on at the, at the ballpark. And, uh, you know, it's uh, it's been a nice start to the season, if you will. Uh, well, the start to the season wasn't so great, but the... <laughs> Post start to the season mm -hmm. has been uh, better, and uh, we'll get into that. But, uh, gentlemen, I hope you're all doing well. Thank you for listening yes. and watching, uh, everybody. Yes, Thank you guys. Episode Cheers. 33. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. so yeah, that's 32. why you guys got to once you guys put me on the payroll where I'm actually making money off this, <laughs> then I'll get it right. Until then, you guys can kiss my ass. Right. Oh, man, and this freaking Bloody Mary is hot. That's Woo. what she said. Let's go. Whoa! <laughs> Ooh, that's no. well, yes. Yeah, it's Spicy. spicy and it's moonshine instead of vodka. Nice. Oh, I ran out of clear. Nice, yeah. dude. Wow. Yeah, this is Tennessee I... moonshine, mind you. Oh yeah. This isn't that cheap old smoky shit that you get down the road. Old <laughs> this smoky. is like this is like homemade shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is homemade Bloody Mary mix that I helped prep last October. Um, Pulling some tomatoes and peppers from my friends' farms, and we spent a day in the kitchen making nice just vats of this oh, stuff. So wow, I got to get really, that recipe, dude. It's really good. I think we wrote it down, so I'll oh good. I'll send it out. I'll share it online, then all the listeners can have it as well. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> well, as Victor alluded to, a um, an initial shaky start, some strong reactions from uh, from. Angel's uh, ex, former, <laughs> formerly known as Twitter, uh, that then kind of morphed into some positive vibes. Uh, the Angels are sitting at four and two right now, uh, having gone uh, one and two uh, in Baltimore and then three and zero oh in Miami. I think that if anybody would have said that the Angels would start the season on the road against two teams that were in the playoffs last year and be coming home for their home opener with a two and four record, that that would be a pretty fucking awesome start to the season and something to, for the time being, to get excited about. And I know there's a lot of people online, you know, jumping on people for being happy and excited and telling everyone to pump the brakes. And I get it. But if it was reversed and the Angels were two and four, it's not like those same people would be saying, oh, it's the start of the season, pump the brakes, nothing to, you know, nothing to worry about. No, it would be a dumpster fire, Chuck. And people <laughs> would be blaming everybody that was uh, that was in the Angels organization. It was already season over <laughs> from the fans mm -hmm. after the second game, dude. Right. And uh, we were all like, when Wash called that uh, closed door meeting and kicked out the media and whatever he said, man, I would just love to be a fly on the wall for that meeting because I mean, and, and I'll kick this over to you, Victor, and, and we'll talk more about how successful closed door team meetings are historically, but I don't know what it was. I, I think that obviously two games into the season, doesn't really call for a closed door meeting, but really he was just, Ron was just trying to get his team uh, back on track, right? Like, hey, we, you know, it was a shitty way to start the season, the first two games, uh, but this is not who we are. We are much better than this. Um, they weren't throwing first pitch strikes. They were getting pummeled when they had to come in the zone behind in the count. And uh, they weren't stealing bases. Or they were, hell, they weren't even getting on base. Now, granted, you have Corbin Burns, right? And you have Grayson Rodriguez, who are two really good pitchers. So I, I get that, right? And then the guy that we faced uh, uh, the final game, Wells, he isn't of that caliber. Um, but, and you can also argue that the Marlins, even though they made the playoffs last year, they're not the same team that they were last year. Uh even so, if they were the same team, they're right. They're they're a mid team. They're meh. I mean? They're, they're meh. Yeah. yeah right. So, exactly. but you have to beat those teams, and they right. did come away 
with a win in Baltimore against a good team. I don't care who the pitcher was. That's a damn good team. And Debmerts pitched his ass off in that game. And holy shit, uh, Jose Soriano, he looked like Scott Shields of yesteryear going three innings and closing the door, you know? And so um, I'm super pumped. And so to your point, Jeff, yes. I mean, I'm thrilled to be sitting at the four and two mark, uh, you know, coming home off of that uh, opening road trip. You, you know, I, I don't, uh, I, I mean, I'm glad that you're super pumped that maybe it's the, uh, the bloody Mary that's got you going or something. <laughs> I mean, we're six games into the season. It's, it's good to be excited and the like, and look at the end of the day, you, you knew you had your, your hands full with the Baltimore Orioles and starting out on the road for six games on the East coast, uh, two teams you hadn't seen all spring. And, uh, but to Jeff's point, uh, what you said about the the Marlins, uh, you know, they're not a very good team. I didn't think they were that good of a team last year. They've got some promise from a young pitching perspective. But, uh, even, well, then that took a blow this week uh, with one of the, their young kids having to have uh, surgery, Tommy John surgery. So he's going to be out for an extended period of time. But yeah. that being said, uh, look, you, you have to, and we've said this before a number of different times, you have to – win the series that you're supposed to win and right uh two of three from the marlins would have been a, a sweet dub piece uh taking the the sweep is even better there's no doubt about that but th those are the games that you have to win uh, those are the right. series that you have to win uh because you're going to probably lose series against teams like the baltimore orioles uh as far yeah. as the the <laughs> the the, the, the clubhouse meeting or whatever wash decided to do after Saturday's game. Look, the first two games of the season were atrocious. Um, and usually uh, the, the way you go about team team meetings, especially called by the skipper, it's based on who you've got on the mound the next day and who the opposition is going to be and who you're facing and stuff like that. So I, I think, from that standpoint, I think the timing was nice because I think he he likes Reed Detmers. He likes the potential of Reed. Uh, you're not facing uh, a Corbin Burns type guy on a Sunday afternoon on getaway day. And you know you're going down to Miami to play a team that's not nearly half the team that the Baltimore Orioles are. So you, you try to catch lightning in a bottle. And they did. Uh, Reed pitched his tail off on Sunday. Um, the offense got enough hits and, and scored enough runs to pick up the W. And then, and then the Marlins thing, you know, it, it, look, I, I watched all three games. They are, they are, I mean, head scratching some of the things that they, they do. Um, and I'm talking about yeah. the Marlins. Yeah. And, and so I, I want to temper the excitement of what the angels have done until we get a little bit further along in the season. It's great to see you've got momentum. You had the off day yesterday. You're going into your home opener. So I think that's all good. I think that's awesome. I think you should have fun tonight at the ballpark if you're going out there. Uh, and you should be in a relatively good good spirits as this ball club starts its home schedule. Now let's just see how it evolves, right? And sure. I, I, you guys know me. I've never, I never get too high, too low, because I just – Look, it, it, whether it's just baseball, and you've right. been around, I've been around a long time, and it's like you mm -hmm. just, the last thing you want to do is like, oh, I'm putting all my money in on the Pittsburgh Pirates. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. I like what the Pirates are doing. They've got mm -hmm. a good nucleus, and they're doing it within a division that's not very good. Right. Um, I like what the Detroit Tigers are doing. Uh, they're not in a very good division, but they've got a good young nucleus, and they're building something special there. But I'm not ready to put all my chips in on that. You know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah. so I, that's why I say a little bit. Let's wait a little bit. I think the Astros may have some issues on the bullpen side of things. They're still a, an unbelievable team. They're still going to be mm -hmm. very good. Verlander will be coming back at some point. Um, and, and they'll get some other guys coming back uh, as far as the health is concerned. Um, the Rangers are the Rangers, even though Josh Young is suffered mm -hmm. the, uh, the injury. It's going to keep him out eight to ten weeks which is a huge blow to them and their offense. Uh, but they've got young guys to come up. And then Seattle is Seattle. Um, yeah. Oakland, you know, whatever. We don't have to talk about Oakland. But Sacramento. Exactly, yeah. Sacramento. So I just think, 
I think you're in a good position. Uh, I think you're in a good position if you're the Angels, if you're an Angel fan going into that home schedule of where you're at. Now just, you know, be realistic about the expectations. That's all I'm saying is just be realistic. Sure. Making yeah. sure that those guys that are on the bump are capable of following through when it matters. Patrick mm -hmm. Sandoval looked like ass against the Baltimore Orioles, pitch better against a lesser team, right? Yeah. And so I think I think those are the things you have to just watch out for that you don't get into these ebbs and flows. You want consistency. Yeah. You yeah. want consistency. Uh, yeah. If you get knocked around, you get knocked around, but you want consistency throughout so that you can get a true measure of what these individuals are, what these people can do from a starting pitching perspective. And that's that's what I'm hoping to see is like, I want to see Patrick shrug off what he did against the Orioles and and face a really good team offensively and at least compete for five or six innings. Right. And keep your team in it. That's and if you could do that on a consistent basis, then I think you could start to get a little bit excited about uh, the starting rotation. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. I, 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 I'm sorry. Go ahead, Chuck. No, no. Well, well I was going to say – on the flip side, uh, the the team that the Angels are playing, the Boston Red Sox, they lead the league in ERA, and they've had a, just a phenomenal uh, run on the mound in the first opening week. But again, they face the A's and they face the Mariners. Mm -hmm. And when I look at the Mariners' offense or lineup, I don't. You got Julio Rodriguez. Uh, you got a couple guys, but it's not stacked. So we'll see. I think this is going to be a good test for the Angels this weekend. To see number one, if they can, you know, uh, hit against what appears to be a good Boston Red Sox pitching staff, or or were they just good because what I just mentioned? They faced lesser teams. It all kind of figures out, and all this stuff, uh, you know, comes to fruition after they play some games. But and, yeah, and, ahead, and it's a Red ahead. Sox team that nobody gave. You know, right? Uh, th people were mocking them for their horrendous off season, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's why, I, again, you can't you can't get too high and you can't get too low, yeah. Um, right now, really, for for any, I'm I'm, I'm looking at the standings and I'm just trying to think of, you know, everybody is kind of where you thought they would be. To be perfectly honest with you, you look at every division, every team maybe outside of the pirates being six and one, right? right? Although people like what they have brewing there as far as the young players, it fricking finally took forever to get there. Um, yeah. You know, you tank enough seasons and you should be able to hit, you know, the lottery on occasion with a draft pick. Right. Um, I think that, and maybe the Astros being two and five, but other than that, like everything's right. pretty, you know, Pretty much yeah. in line with what everyone expected. Dodgers, Diamondbacks, Padres, Giants, you know, Pirates, Brewers, Cubs, Reds, um, Braves, Phillies, Nationals, Mets, Marlins, you know, and, and, right. and so on and so forth. So I, that, that's why I think you have to just let it play out. I think you got to get through a month of baseball, see where the injuries start to shake out, who gets hurt, um, who is stepping up that you didn't expect to step up and how are mm -hmm. they fitting in, whether it's rotation or offense. And I'm talking not just about the angels, but just across baseball. Sure. And that's why yeah. I, I, I like to see these games um, where they're being played, what teams they're playing and how they are uh, matriculating through their, their schedule <laughs> to see how they can, you know, ultimately what you think you have the last five months of the season uh, going forward, assuming they play to their level. Yeah, sure. I think all that's fair. I think that when we talk about the first place Los Angeles Angels, it's fair to say. <laughs> well, I hope they're not. I swear to God, I, they better not be answering the phone call, the phones like that in in Anaheim. I remember the Rangers. I uh, so I got I got to the Rangers in '04, and I want to say. Was it 04? It might have been 04 because they had a really good year in 04. They surprised a lot of teams. Buck Show Walter was managing. And I I want to say that, again, I think it was 04. And I think for like a brief second, a millisecond, the Rangers were in first place. <laughs> and they were answering the phone calls from at, the, at the main office. Uh, thank you for calling the first place Texas Rangers. I mean, like, really? Really? I mean, I, I guess you have to milk it for all it's worth. but. Um, 
That, Jeff that is. was that was at what? a team that was at that was at a time where the team was not very good and they were really struggling. So uh, they definitely can answer uh, world champion uh, Texas Rangers for sure now. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I I enjoy doing it one because I know that it just like gets under people's skin some time to do it. So it's just kind of fun to to poke at people. Yeah. But two, I know that when we roll into, I don't know. I anticipate that when we roll into mid to late July and this team is six to 11 games under 500 and, and this podcast has a much different vibe to it that, uh, it's so you're, good. To, you're, you're dumping on them already, huh? It's good. To oh my guess, gosh. Jeff is throwing I'm not, I'm the first elbow. Pick I'm a not, side. Pick a side, Jeff. I'm Come on. Dumping. I'm 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 here for it. I think this is a, you know, I I'm it's looking a re, forward. To... It's look, it's a retuning season. Sure. To me. It's a yeah. it's yeah, a total yeah. retune season. Whatever you get out of it, you you have to look at the positives and the negatives, right? Because I think ultimately it's gonna shape what 25 and beyond looks like. And I'm not talking about from a from an expense standpoint. I'm talking about what you have mm -hmm. as an organization. And again, it goes back to the young guys, you know, and, and making sure that those guys continue to, t you know, make progress, you know, whether it's baby steps or otherwise, you want them to make progress uh, or to have success and, and be able to progress forward in a positive manner. And I think that's right. what you're looking for this year. To me, anything else is icing on the cake. Sure. I think that's I think that's a level headed, feet firmly planted on the ground outlook and expectation for the Angels organization, especially within this division. And I think that's that's where you that's where maybe that's why I don't get too high and too low. It's just because like, yeah, let's just wait and see. Let's wait and see. Yeah, I'm excited, but hey, listen, I hope that they they go off and sit there and they all five guys in the rotation do live up to their expectations and Taylor Ward is back and Joe Adele is contributing. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I, I think that would be awesome. And then at that point, you're just like, all right, catch lightning in a bottle. And let's see yeah. if we add anybody at the, at the trade deadline yeah. and then take your chances. But other for me right now, it's like, all right, let's just see what 24 has in store and um, you know, and go from there. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm certainly not measuring for championship rings right now. It's just fun to get off to a good start. Yeah, I think it's for sure. It uh, is. It is. To, to your point, a retuning season. It, it's. It was interesting. I think not only to us, but to all of baseball. Of, you know, what a post Shohei Otani Angels organization was going to look like, and the outlook wasn't rosy. And so far, off to a good start. And and again, all all of these games have been on the road. They haven't played at mm -hmm. home yet. So. I don't think there's anything wrong with uh, with enjoying it while uh, enjoying the good weather while it's here. Right. No, yeah. I, I, I absolutely. And, I, and I, like I said, I hope you know there'll be pomp and circumstance today uh, mm -hmm. with the the pregame mm -hmm. stuff and and Jared yeah. Weaver throwing out the ceremonial first pitch. Um, I, I think that's that's all good. And by the way, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm trying to think back because I don't pay that close attention to who are the ceremonial first pitches on opening days and stuff like that. But if I'm not mistaken, it's been an organization and I've, and I've, I've said this before and I've said it in a direct manner that I think it's, it is shameful that the organization has not gone out and brought back more of their past players yep. uh, outside of, Chuck Finley, Bobby Gritch, Adam Kennedy, you know, the, the standard five All or the six that, that, that are always there. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's great to see Weave back at the yard. I think Torrey Hunter is throwing out the ceremonial first pitch uh, yep. tomorrow night on Saturday night. I don't know who's throwing it on Sunday. But more of that needs to happen. This organization has a deep, rich mm -hmm. history. You have one world championship, but you have a deep, rich history. Yep. And its mm -hmm. fan base loves its organization, its team, yeah. and its history. So why they, for whatever reason, resist the temptation to embrace that history, bring mm -hmm. those players back, have a fan fest, 
do things that you can connect your fan base to the history. I just, it is beyond me that they have failed to do that and have dropped the ball year in and year out in doing it that way. Yeah. But I'm glad yeah. to see that Weave's back, Tory's back. So I, I, hopefully this is the trend of moving forward that we're, we're going to see more and more of this. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. All right, Chuck. So I have, I have blown enough rainbows and sunshine through this <laughs> microphone. What, Unicorns what and are, rainbows? Yeah. What, what are the things? One of the things I think that we can look at as being certainly an area of concern. And, you know, Victor touched on it, um, is, you know, is the pitching. And specifically when, you know, we look at, at Sandoval's first game and then followed by his then kind of, I'll call it bounce back-ish game mm -hmm. in Miami. He pitched, he pitched way better than I thought he was going to. Right. Mm -hmm. So let me just say that. And, you know, good job. Great way to bounce back from an absolutely dumpster fire first game. But there were also some areas of concern. I felt like there was a couple of innings, specifically his last inning, where he was back to kind of doing that that nibbling stuff. As it right. relates to, you know, to Patrick and, and some of the others, what are the things that you've seen that you've liked and, and not liked? Well, again, it's super, super early and it's, uh, there's not enough to, to go off of, but, um, I mean, hell Sandoval struck out, uh, Luis, uh, rise, right. And that guy never strikes, he struck him out twice. Um, so his stuff was working early on. He had great command of all of his pitches. And we talked before about how he's good. He is a good pitcher. He's got a great repertoire of, of pitches, but it's the commanding of them, and especially the fastball. That's uh, been lacking for him, the command of the fastball. Um, but we saw how he was getting ahead of hitters in that game, and you saw the result of it. Later on, you know, I don't know if it was fatigue or if he uh, – there were a couple, If correct me if I'm wrong, hits that were kind of bleed, you know, bloopers, and they weren't really crushed in that last inning. Um, and you could see him visibly kind of, you know, frustrated a little bit. Um but but hell, dude, I mean, he gave us almost six innings in that start. Mm -hmm. And and to Victor's earlier point, we need to see that for him almost every time out. Right. Right. Get ahead of the hitters. Stay in the game. Keep your keep the angels in the game. Um, so they're, you know, and so Detmers looked amazing. Right. Mm -hmm. Sil Seth, uh, you know, I, I, I chalk it up to you know, first start of the year jitters. I mean, he's got great stuff. Um, he looked bad. Yeah, yeah, he did. He did. Mm -hmm. Tyler Anderson, I want to call out because that guy, I, I went and saw some video of him uh, when he was with the Dodgers after his start. With, and and, I, and I, was, I was looking at him and I was like, God, you know, looking at some of his best performances and it was his changeup that was just, he was get he his fastball was was hitting the corners. Um, uh, he he was changing the eye level with his fastball, but his changeup was the uh, uh, the X factor man. I mean, the you saw. I mean, everybody was just looking silly swinging at that changeup. Um, I don't know why you wouldn't have thrown anything but off speed to the Marlins. I mean, if you do any right. type of scouting report, just watch right. them. It's a team that will they will get themselves out. And so right. from a, from a, and I, and I'd imagine from a spring training perspective, when you're looking ahead to the, uh, the season and you start to plot out what your rotation is going to look like, you know, would you rather have Tyler Anderson face the Orioles or the Marlins? And right. so, you know, it, 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 that's why he started where he started is just because, Look, he's coming off a, a horrendous season. Um, yeah. He is a touch and feel guy. And if the touch or feel, either one is gone, then he's he's in some deep doo-doo. And so, yeah. but that being said, it, it's very easy that if you get that feel, especially with the off-speed pitch early and you see it, 
meaning visually from a catcher's perspective, coaching perspective, from a pitching's perspective, when you see guys getting themselves out, it's like, all right, I don't, I don't have to work today. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I don't have to right. go above and beyond. I just, boom, boom, show a fastball for effect. Boom. You know what I mean? And I think that that's where I, that's what I took away from his outing um, the other day against the Marlins. I, again, I want to see what it looks like against a formidable offense. Mm -hmm. And does it become a, a nibble, nibble, nibble? Does it become trying to really trying right. to be something that you're not? And right. I think that's the thing. It's like some guy, some of these guys tried to become Patrick try to become something that he's not. What mm -hmm. is your bread and butter? <laughs> Go to it. It's like Barry mm -hmm. Enright talks about throwing strikes, getting ahead, finish ahead, uh, limit your pitches. But uh, and and Reed, you know, I'm thinking about it now. Going back to in that game in Baltimore, while he did have a good outing, there were times where 95 up and out of the zone, 94 up here on the arm side, 92 hard down and in, and and there were pitches that were missing off the plate and still kind of looking in like almost like begging for the calls. I'm not taking anything away from his start. I'm just saying if something's working, stick with it. You don't have to try mm -hmm. to become something that you're not. And I think sometimes these guys, for whatever reason, feel like they can, they feel the need to go and try something when mm -hmm. that 80% or 85% is perfect. It's just enough. Right. You don't have to go to 110%, even though that's, physically and just incapable of ha mathematically incapable of happening as an individual. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Hypothetically yeah. speaking, that you don't mm -hmm. need to have to go above and beyond. Just get out. Do I you mean, think so, it's a case it's a of body. I'm having success with this, but now I know they're going to be looking for it. So I have to throw other things and they but get until so you, until that, they make the so adjustment on you. Right. Like until they make the adjustment, don't to make you. the adjustment until they prove they can, beat you right right yeah right as, as the hitters you, hitters do it all the time too it's like okay mm -hmm. this is what he threw to me the first time so i think i'm gonna go look for this i'm like like what are you changing your mind like your your mind humping yourself i mean by doing that and you're 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 fighting yourself in a batter's box as a hitter doing that and you're and conversely on a pitcher's mound you're doing the exact same thing it's like uh, it's like crash yeah. davis said in bull mm -hmm. durham don't think, just throw, you know, <laughs> seriously, don't think you're only going to hurt true. the team. It's so true because yeah. guys start to think too much on the mound. It's like, that's when you just, yeah. just trust in what's happening in front of you, you know? And yeah, it's easier for some, it's much harder for others, especially if the game starts to, you know, you get a base runner here, a base runner there. And can we please, this will be my last, <laughs> I love it when you start with it. And so, can we please? No, it's going to be good. Be, this will not be his last. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. I, the, when he when he starts with, and can we please? It's going to be epic. All right, go ahead. Victor. Oh, it, it's not. It's not that epic. It really isn't. <laughs> uh, but it, when we talk about Patrick Sandoval, can we please stop talking about the <laughs> the unearned runs? that you know that that come across against his ledger and the 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 runs oh, that yeah. score after an error you know what i've said this before i said it last year when we were talking about this that's on you like if you lead mm -hmm. the world in unearned runs that's on you it's because you mm -hmm. let it snowball because right dudes 100%. true dudes on the bump nip that in the bud and they pick up they pick up their teammates right you right. know you can't get pissed about it. Oh, whatever. And you know, some guys don't care because it's an unearned run, whatever. But it's like, as a team, you're giving up runs, right? At the end of the right. day, you still have to score more than the opposition after 27 outs. Yeah. Unless yeah. you go next guys, How are those guys getting on base with all these unearned runs? Some of the times there's an errors, but some of the times you're walking them. Right. You're giving you're, up right. hits or giving up hits. Right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that that, that but they, like they, I don't know why they. I don't know if it's the I, production team or whatever, but Jesus, just yeah. stop already. <laughs> okay. How about, how about, Hey, or someone call it out. Okay. That that's great. That, that he, that's, he leads the world in that category, but at some point freaking right, own yeah. up to it. And how's he going to fix it? it? Right. Yeah. At some point he's got to, yeah. he's got to be the one that does it. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I should stop walking guys and giving up hits.
and the mayors won't matter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chuck. So one, a couple of a theme that came in uh, through the mailbag from Joe and Claremont, from Brent and Murfreesboro, and also from Marcus and Garden Grove, revolves around one of our favorite topics: Anthony two, two outs, <laughs> over over nineteen Rendon. Oh. Um, and specifically a lot about him batting in the leadoff spot, right? So thoughts on that. Like how how long does Wash let him go in that leadoff position before moving him for fear that he may be, you know, as we talked about on the last episode, messing with what's going on between the ears uh, versus, you know what, he's he's a professional – People get off to slow starts just like they get off to hot starts and it all right. ends out later in the year. Right. What do you think? I, I will I will say this. Um, I was encouraged uh, by his last start. Uh, his exit velocities were up there into the 100 mile per hour range. He was, and he drove the ball a couple of times uh, deep into the outfield as well. Um, he didn't play the next day. And I thought that, because of that, they should have played him the next day. Um, something to build off of, right? Um, he's a guy that will get on base. He's, he had a key walk the game before uh, in that comeback win. Mm -hmm. That was that was clutch. And you think, oh, a clutch walk. But, hey, I mean, that's what he does. He's, yeah, he's got a great eye at the plate. clutch no matter how you do it. Exactly. And, and, and so far, his defense has looked uh, a lot better. Um, but again, I get the other side. I, you know, I'm kind of in the middle on on Rendon. I mean, but what I am not is one of these guys that just is a staunch hater of the guy. Like I hate this guy no matter what. I want to see him fail. No, I'm not that. I mean, I'm an Angels fan. I want if if Anthony Rendon becomes even just a portion of what he was in 2019. For this Angels uh, team, we're going to be successful. Um, getting on base, getting a, hitting a ton of doubles. Um, and so, I mean, I'm pulling for the guy, Jeff. And and, and so I, I hope that he does well because I know that that means the Angels will be successful. Now, on the flip side, you know, 0 for 19, whatever. Everybody gets off to a hot or a slow start. Um, a lot of his uh, balls in play – prior to the game that I mentioned where he was crushing it, albeit for outs, um, they were weak pop-ups or, you know, weak ground balls. And so that, and that was a, a theme I saw of Rendon in spring training throughout spring training. So it was a concern because I spoke to somebody close to the team uh, in spring training. And they said that, uh, you know, Anthony Rendon, Rendon showed up, visibly smaller uh you know in size right yeah. uh specifically he, this person mentioned his arms i mean not that you need to have freaking jose canseco mark mcguire arms to be a baseball player but he looked uh visibly less of a athlete you know that comes into spring training in the best shape of their life right. as we <laughs> <laughs> so anyway i'm pulling for the guy but at the same time is and, and you hear that he's been dedicated working with Wash uh, on the on the defensive side of things. Um, and I just hope it all comes together for him because I am skeptical too. Mm -hmm. So. Victor, are there things that guys do? I mean, when, when you start off a season, you know, 0 for 19, how much does that get into somebody's head where they just start – the bat just starts to turn to sawdust in their hands because they're gripping so hard and they, they want to get over the hump and get that done. Or is it something where they know and understand we're only six games into this thing and it's going to be fine. Well, based on Anthony's own words, he's not sweating it. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's just a game, right? So, yep. um, so I, I don't I don't see seriously. I mean that's that's how he looks at it, and that's his outlook. And I I have no right. whatever no qualms yeah. um, with it. I think what I said last year was I mean, you know, 
be careful. You know, it's okay to speak your mind, but I mean, if you're constantly doing the exact same thing, you, you can't wonder why people start crush you, right? Start right. crushing you over it. So I, I don't think it's a, I don't think it's an impact on him. I don't, you know, if if you believe that, you know, the the game is secondary to him, and I don't, and again, I'm not, I'm not chastising the guy, but if his priorities are different than that of someone else wearing a major league baseball uniform, I don't see an over nineteen stressing him out or making it worse for him or anything like that. Or like you said, you know, the bat becomes sawdust in his hands. Uh, I think Chris Bryant was off to um, Mm. an awful start, just got his first hit the other day against the Cubs. And that was his first hit going back to like September (laughs) of last year. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. For Um, the Carter administration. Yeah, (laughs) 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 exactly. Um, So I, I, you know, We'll see how it plays out. I I think what Wash is trying to do is just kind of I think he likes him at the top of the order just from a from a pitch uh a guy who takes a lot of pitches and is willing to set the table, is not afraid to hit uh deep in account. Um but you know, it's it's baseball. You're gonna have ebbs and flows. Like I, I think I think you'll take a an O for whatever playing solid defense rather than uh, oh, he's 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 hurt again, and he's going to be gone for eight to ten weeks. I think people would be more pissed yeah. about that. And injuries happen, mind you, but I think I think fan Angel fans would be more upset about that than hey, he's won for his last thirty two, but he's playing Gold Glove caliber defense. Yeah. He's seen a lot of pitches. He's helping the lineup out. The team is winning a little bit. I think you could you could deal with that more so as a fan than. He's on the shelf again, and I think that, right? I think that's probably more of a concern for Angel fans than anything else. Yeah, yep. and you know what? I I didn't call out Andy from Peterborough in the UK. Uh, oh, from the mailbag, he also had nice. a similar question to the other guys regarding Ren. I thought you were calling him out because like he re- he did something wrong, or you're going to poke fun at him. No, nope. call him out. No. Nope. I I just missed it as I was going through. Chuck Ward's been having a good a good start to the season. I mean, you know, kind of yeah. again that where are the runs going to come from? You know, who's who's going to protect Trout? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, good heavens! I mean, the guy is oh, where's he at? He's batting three twenty, um, three home runs, eight RBIs. I mean, yeah. I fantastic start right and because you know he's and what i noticed that stood out to me he's a guy that gets on base a lot you know via the Mm -hmm. walk as well but now that he's inserted into the cleanup spot of the lineup he's you know he's got six strikeouts to zero walks which is something you never see with him but i want that i want a guy hacking and i'm sure you probably agree with this too victor if you're in the cleanup spot i mean get up there hacking and, and and taylor ward had a at a good spring as well. And so it's good to see. I was concerned um, that, you know, getting hit in the face and face planting the wall all in the same season, uh, you know, it's like, my God, I mean, is this guy, you know, going to bounce back? And he's proven a lot of folks wrong. And he, he's even pro- like me, when I looked at uh, Wash's lineup card, inserting ward into the cleanup spot i was pulling for i was thinking drury should be the guy you know because he put together a a great season he was productive um has some power um and so i thought he'd be the better choice there but um so far it's early but wash has uh proven us all wrong on that um yeah he's he's looked great uh couldn't be happier for the guy too i don't i don't think he's really affected by a whole lot to be perfectly honest with you he's he's always been a measured individual yeah. that that uh, has been pretty much even keel even when you know the expectation early on in his career was x that he was going to be you know a great hitter mm-hmm. and it didn't pan out but kind of reinvented himself and he's just kind of stayed true to himself and and i think that's that's kind of why you root for him uh, the guy who's mm-hmm. had to learn uh, a couple of different positions and 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 finally stuck in the outfield because i remember Gosh, what four or five years ago when 
they plopped him out in right field, you know, I think it's because, it had, or maybe it was left field when Upton got hurt or something to that effect. It's like, Oh, you gotta watch out. But he's worked his ass off everywhere. Everything that his, he's yeah. been asked to do. He's, he's worked his tail off. And I think that's why you end up rooting for a guy like that. So I don't, I don't think much really impacts him or affects him on a day-to-day basis. Uh, I think he knows, he knows his lane. And I think he's just, I, I, we've touched on this before. It's like he, mm. he, he's never trying to do more than what he's capable of. He's, he, he knows what he's good at. And mm-hmm. that's, that's what he's striving for. It's like, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to accomplish every single at bat, every pitch that's thrown defensively. And that's where I'm going to be. And I, and I think that's why, I think that's why you root for the guy uh, mm-hmm. because he is such a blue collar mentality individual. And it's not about him. It's about the team. And so mm-hmm. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm I've always enjoyed him. Um, great dude. Uh, very quiet and but he's 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 a worker and he just goes out and does it. I think that's that's why he's capable of putting away, you know, getting hit in the face or running into an outfield wall, whatever the case may be, that it's it's just a setback. It's no big deal. It's not it's not gonna impact me in a in a more grandiose style going forward. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Chuck, what a, it's a good comment about knowing knowing your lane and staying in your lane and mm-hmm. everybody Everybody knowing and understanding their role and how what they do and how they do it and what's expected of them is important to the whole and that you're not being asked to, Mm. you know, to strike out the side on one pitch, which I, I sometimes feel and and maybe this is just me, but I sometimes feel like when Sandoval's pitching that that. I imagine that's his his mindset, right? That he he's so grinding in that he wants to strike out the side on one pitch. But mm-hmm. know know your know your position, know your lane, know what your role is. And as we talk about getting off to a four and two start and how that's really good, small sample size, but really good, and maybe mm-hmm. even a little surprising to us, how much of that is related to the fact that we now have a new skipper. Mm-hmm. That is that is steering the ship and and putting people in positions to succeed and to do what they need to do individually so that the whole is is stronger. Is a lot of this really? I guess what I'm long winded way of saying is a lot of <laughs> of this four and two start on wash. Well, I I think he's a a big part of that yes jeff um but you know you look at this team and uh you know and shanuel and ohapi and neto and and uh these guys and and from what i the folks that i talked to when i was in spring training these guys have come in after spending some time earlier in camp with wash they got there they all got there early they weren't, you know, position players aren't supposed to report until a day, a few days out, right, from after pitchers and catchers. And they were there, you know, the Nettos, uh, obviously oh, Hoppy was there because he's a catcher, but um, but a lot of these guys were there. The Shani was put in the work and um, under, you know, uh, Wash's tutelage. And I, and I think that um, with him being such a great leader and such a great baseball mind, um, that uh again I, and i don't want to make any predictions but to me it's it's fun to watch this team knowing that these guys are like this is a shohei otani less new uh, brand new chapter right and this is wash's team okay this isn't one guy and a whole bunch of other guys below otani right and um there's something to be said for that otani factor Right, with him not being on this team anymore, well, the Tony media less. <laughs> a tiny less factor, right? <laughs> and so, um, and then you put Wash at the helm. And to your and to your question, yes, I think that he uh, that as long as this team stays healthy, Jeff, um, you know, I I think that they're going to be fun to watch. I'll just say that. And to me, 
I, I made this uh, point earlier on, on the last podcast that, like, why are you excited, Chuck? Well, it's for the same reasons that I just talked about. Wash, younger guys to watch, and to, you know, Victor's point earlier, like, okay, what are you looking to get out of this retooling season? And to me, it's that. Mm-hmm. Watching these guys progress, hopefully the Trouts and the Rendones stay healthy, and, um, and the pitching staff can really follow – uh, the, the, the coaching under Barry Enright, throw strikes, don't nibble, throw strikes. They got away f- from that in the first two games, uh, but they incorporated that back in. We saw the results of it. So let's just see and pray, and I hope that it just progresses and they stick to that. Yeah, I like it. I, I agree yeah. with you. And I think a lot of it has to do with, you talk about the first two games. I mean, it's, again, you have to look at the competition, right? The lineup's a little right. bit different. Line up yeah. a little bit different on Sunday um, yeah. for the Orioles. And so, but sure. yes, I, I, I think this team is going to be fun to watch. There's no doubt. Uh, I think there's, again, barring any injuries uh, to the main guys, uh, that it, it's they're going to be all right. And I think, uh, mm-hmm. and by all right, I mean competitive, you know, and have a chance. Right. Um, yeah. Assuming these, the young pitchers can, can step up and 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 get the job done and the bullpen doesn't get overused early yeah Yeah. all right well i think we've gone through a lot uh anybody have any interest in talking about what happened with uh shohei otani's first home run with the dodgers and kind of the the fallout from that fan thing or should we kick talking about like the whole I met the fan or the quote or the interpreter thing or whatever the Dodgers organization. It sounded like they kind of descended on her and separated her from her husband or her boyfriend. So they could kind of strong arm her into giving the ball back. And, and then Otani, you know, through the interpreter said that he, he, you know, met her or conversed with her talked with her and got the ball back, but it turns out they never met. But then it was, was this a misinterpretation from the interpreter? And I'm thinking, how many things are going to go on in the first month of the season that, with this guy that are going to be pinned <laughs> on, the, on an interpreter? Yeah. When in doubt, always, always blame the interpreter. Uh, right. I look, I, I don't, I don't personally have an opinion on what happened. I have no idea. I wasn't there. I didn't hear it. I didn't see it. Um, yeah. My only thing is, you know, other than, other than the fact that if you're a Dodger fan, who gives a shit about the 172nd home run hit by a major league baseball player? Because Thank that's, you. That that's, that's basically what it is. It's like, yeah. okay, it's his right. first as a Dodger. Cool. I mean, that, and if you're a Dodger fan, great. You, you hope that that is what gets him going i guess from a power perspective and and whatever it kind of goes off like mookie and because the monkey's off his back or whatever albert you know i don't I don't remember all this hoopla when albert hit his first home run into the bullpen against the toronto blue jays as a member of of uh, the angels after being for so many years with the st louis cardinals i don't right. remember did, did anybody give a shit when ken griffey jr hit his first home run as a cincinnati red besides the cincinnati reds fans it was his 320 or whatever it was 390th no. of his career um, when Ichiro went to the Yankees. I mean, shall I, shall I continue? No, I mean, this is I... his 172nd <laughs> career home run. It's like, why are we making such a big deal about the stupid ball? Dan yeah. Patrick had somebody on his show this morning that was talking about, they, they were talking about this incident and they had somebody that, that <clears throat> came in and said the value of that ball being his first home run with the Dodgers was a hundred thousand dollars? Maybe to a Dodger fan. That's what I'm saying. Right, for, and for a I'm Dodger thinking, maybe, fan, I get it. Yes, I totally. Yeah, maybe get I don't it. understand the collectible market. And right. Maybe I don't. But know, but, but for everybody oh else, God. it's like, okay, it's a Who ball. Cares? I mean, cool. Right. I mean, yeah. I, I, Jeez. I, I think the the. I, I don't know why they're making such a big. I mean, look, she. Yeah, should they have? Maybe negotiated a better deal, I guess. If you're, I mean, she is a Dodger fan. Treated obviously. her better. Yeah. Well, I, I don't, yeah. I don't know the story. Like, I don't know sure. exactly what happened. Yeah, so yeah. She's mm, on Instagram or on social saying she's happy with what she got. 
So look, at, at the end of the day, I, I really don't care. I, it's not like I'm losing sleep over this. Um, <laughs> so she felt like she got a good deal. Look, something's worth what someone's willing to pay for it. Now, yep. I know that they, like, where's the ball going? See, that's the thing. Is she, <laughs> like, is this something <laughs> Dodgers that- Dodgers Hall of Fame. But you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, right. I want to give Shohei the ball. Like, for Shohei, mm-hmm. like, uh, okay, it's my first home run as a Dodgers, my 172nd of my career. Cool. Big like, deal. Like, for the Dodgers, are they, does it go into a case? It's not going to the Hall of Fame, is it? Like, it's not going like, to Cooperstown. Like, it yeah, may go like, to El Segundo, but it's so not going to Cooperstown. So that, again, it goes back to like, why are we making such a big deal about this baseball? I mean, as a Dodger fan, great. You hit his first homer as a Dodger. Hopefully now he starts going off with Freddie and Mookie. Now, can you imagine we're scoring? But they've scored at least five runs in every game so far, something to that effect. Now that maybe yeah. they can score eight runs per game because he starts hitting the long ball. <laughs> that's That's what I can be thinking of as a Dodger fan, but it's like, I, I don't know, man. <laughs> I had to look it up. I'm like, was this like a milestone home run? Like, was this number 200 or something? Like that, I, I maybe I get those, right? The 200s, maybe. 300s, maybe. Yeah. Sure, but like, sure. 172nd, not so much. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, and then the, the other story that people are talking about is, did he did he lie? I mean, did he really meet the this person or not? And so, and it's just an interpreter thing, right? Like, right. Well, true. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Allegedly. What is maybe it? it is. But it's on. <laughs> do we not have the audio? Do they, did, have they not dissected the audio? Like in Japanese. Not that I've he's, seen yet. Not he speaks that I've in Japanese seen and it gets translated yes. to English. So, but I don't understand Japanese. I would pretty much take whatever he said and the transcript of it. And I would copy and paste it into Google translate and give yeah. it a translation. That's how I, right. that's how I usually work those things. Yeah. But has, has there been a, a Japanese reporter that said, yes, that's what he said. No, that's not what he said. Or it, it got lost in translation. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't imagine how hard it is to be a translator, to be perfectly honest with you. And I mm. even, even like, because you, you're trying to simplify things and keep them as as tight as possible, especially when you're doing a show. Um, or I had Vladdy on, you know, doing a broadcast, and he speaks English, but you know how it is when you, and you you just you you kind of give it the cliff notes version, right? right? Because from from a time's sake, I would imagine that at this point with everything that's gone on, that whomever it is. And I I forget the gentleman's name that's doing the translating now for the Dodgers. Uh, Man, you, you almost every little word that's going to come out of Shohei's mouth is going to be scrutinized if it's not interpreted correctly. And I don't, Hmm. I don't know if that's fair to the interpreter, but at the end of the day, there's Japanese media all over the place. Mm -hmm. And it would, I would imagine be easy for anybody, whether it's TMZ or KTLA, to just go to a Japanese media member that's that was there and say, "Hey, what did he say?" and I, sure, I, 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 and, and clear it all up. I, I hate like, are we gonna are we gonna sit here and do this every time he has a press conference? Like, oh, that's not what he said. That's not what he meant. He meant this. It's like, well, this I'm wondering getting... if that's not going to be the case now. And and part of this is, you know what? Welcome to a big market team. Yeah. With a oh. lot of expectations That's fair. with your $700 million contract. This yeah. is the bullshit that comes with it. So enjoy. But, right. I, I, you know, part of me is wondering how many of these media organizations aren't going to be going out and hiring their own interpreters that are going to be following the team around or become reporters like TMZ or, or gosh, even the LA Times or... You know, any of them that are that when the interpreter says something, they're going to lean over and go, that's not exactly what he said. What no. he wow. said was X, Y, Z. I didn't and read the article, but didn't Plaschke, up into a whole new thing. Didn't Plaschke write something about the Dodgers organization and the bumbling of it or something to that yes. effect? Yeah, that it mm. turned, I haven't read it, but I saw the headlines of, yeah. uh, you know, basically a, a great moment turned to ugly. Look, I mean, if they're tell me a team that hasn't tried to lowball a fan into giving up the baseball. Sure. I mean, right. that, that happens that happens all the time. Yeah. Uh it's hard to 
it's hard to sit here and go chastise the organization uh, when the when the fan themselves are saying we're happy with what we got. Not, maybe the husband's not because somebody got in his ear and said, "Hey, dude, that ball's gonna <laughs> you could sold that ball for a hundred grand." After the fact, you know, oh, I can I can see that you know, like like revisionist history, like ah oh, shit. Well, yeah, they did separate us, and they they, they <laughs> told us we couldn't go here without this and that. Um, but you know, like mm. you got a couple caps, which like caps really like that's what you're asking for, right? Um, you know, I mean. Ask for a signed jock or something. Get a bat. It's meaningful. <laughs> you know? Signed jock. I love it. Um, <laughs> but he got a bat, got a bat, a ball, and two hats, right? Something to that effect. Something like that. No, yeah. No, no, no. But that's cool. I mean, like, if she's sure. happy, then that's that's end of the story. Like, right. why are we? But right. that's but to your point, Jeff, and and you know, I think we touched on this a little bit that you know last year when he was going through the whole free agency thing and even leading, you know, when he was still with the angels and thinking about where he might end up. Right. Um, and, and I've said this before, you can hide in orange County. Yeah, you mm-hmm. can. I mean, that's just, yep. that's just the nature of it. You can hide in orange County. You can make yourself available when you go to the Dodgers. It's, it's different. Sure. It's different. And I, and I don't say this in a negative way whatsoever. Look at Kike Hernandez when he's with the Dodgers and he's with the Boston Red Sox. It's a different person, different personality. Kike is one of those mm. outward personalities in your face, you know, and it's different in Boston when, than when it is in LA. And when he gets back to LA, it's, it's Kike. Kike's back. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because it's mm. showtime. And, right. and I think everyone understands that. Freddie Freeman, I don't think is that type of guy. Like I don't uh, outwardly, I mean, he's a, he's a really easygoing guy, but he mm-hmm. picks and chooses his spot, but the spotlight is always on the Dodgers, always sure. on the Dodgers. And it's, and I think you have to understand that every little thing is probably going to get scrutinized, especially with everything that happened in spring training. And you know, the story that yep. came out with Epe and all that stuff. Um, it's, it's never, it's never going to be easy. Um, and it's, it's unfortunate that he's got to deal with that stuff. Uh, to that extent, especially mm. since, you know, whether he met with the fan, whether he didn't, who cares at the end of the day, like, does it matter? Like he right. signed a couple of items for the fan mm-hmm. um, and they did the exchange. I just, I just think they're just making a bigger deal of this than, than necessary. Now it still is 172nd career home run. <laughs> now that's a bigger deal. Than that should be the storyline. They buried the lead on that one. <laughs> But but you know what though, Jeff? I mean, in in the time that Otani has been with the Angels, there wasn't any of this shit that came out. And, nope. and to you know, Victor's point, I mean, maybe it's because it's Orange County, laid back mm-hmm. Orange County, right? Not in the giant market that already wanted the Angels to be in. Well, you know, with the Los Angeles uh, uh, in front of the Angels, but um, but yeah, I mean, I I don't know. I mean. Uh, are we finding out the true guy of Otani or is it because to your earlier points, I mean, he's in a bigger market now. Right. Well, and what's so. funny is I was always under the impression that that's why he picked the angels in the first place. Right. Yep. When exactly. He, when yeah. and that shocked the baseball world that he was going, right. to, you know, to play in, in Anaheim. Yeah. Yeah. That, that he could, you know, that he could do his thing and not be under the be big market adjacent without mm. being in the the heated spotlight of of a of a bigger team um <clears throat> and to abandon that and go to a team well this is why you picked the angels to begin with and yeah but right. that being said yeah. he's not he's Let's just be fair now, right? He he's not complaining about he, the, the media scrutiny. He's not uh, until uh, if he does, then 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 we can start talking about apples to apples as far as well. You you know this is why you chose Orange County versus L.A. when you mm-hmm. first came to the United States, all that stuff. But uh, until until then, it, it was again. What did he say? Just find out what he said. Sure, sure. Um, but you're <laughs> yeah. right. Everything. Like, uh, 
everything is going to be is, is under a microscope with the Dodgers. And it's because they've yeah. won. It's because of their proximity to Hollywood. It's because yeah. of their proximity to the television studios. It's mm-hmm. the the person, the people that go there, the stars that go there uh, on mm. a nightly. It, it just is what it is. There's nothing wrong yeah. with it. It just that's no. that's when you go and sign there, especially in this day and age where the Dodgers are, where they're at payroll wise and stuff like that. If you're going as a free agent, the expectation is, hey man, just so you know, you know you're a Dodger, and this is what comes with that. Um, right. And I think I think you know most people understand that, and you know Shohei. Is getting a little taste of it now, but look, he he was he was already a global superstar mm-hmm. prior to signing the. the, the I, I just think that once he signed the deal with the Dodgers, it just it really it really shined the light on him. You know what I'm saying? And so, and, and everybody wants a piece of him because now he's a Dodger. He's in L.A. It, it's just constant, constant, constant media attention, um, and I. I think, I think it's good for the game. I, I think the more we can spotlight the best players in the game, the better. Um, I just hope it doesn't get to the point where like, like we're really going to scrutinize every little thing he says after every single game. I just, mm-hmm. I don't think that's fair to him. I don't think that, but that's just me. That's just yeah. me. Yeah. And well, I don't care yeah. about it as a fan. It's like, really? That's yeah. What does that ball mean again? Yeah. Right. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> What is the value of that freaking ball? Well, it's it's just heartbreaking to see these kinds of distractions impacting the Dodgers. I know. That, oh, I so. know. I know. <laughs> All I right. It's say- not impacting them. It's not impacting them. Trust no. me. That team's no. pretty it's freaking good, up. man. It's building up. Good. The pressure is getting ready. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what were you going to well, say, Chuck? Well, what? okay. One of the things that has been frustrating to see on uh, social media is these guys just coming out with this, oh my gosh, Mike Trout, this is the year that he gets traded to, to Philadelphia or an East Coast team, or uh, they're highlighting the failures of a lot, you know, of, of the team. Like we've been through this, right? The past four or five years, right? Oh, you got Trout and Otani, you're not making it to the playoffs. We hear this over and over. And then they're they're throwing some other guys, you know, Rendon and uh and 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 the team in general. And, and and to see that it's 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 frustrating, man. I'm like, come on, you get a life. Literally, everybody in the MLB network, all these pundits, all these writers, experts on on X, have just been, oh yeah, this is year. Dan O'Dowd listening on opening day. I had it playing in the background as I'm getting my house ready for the watch party, opening day watch party, and his prediction was. Trout would be, and these guys were all making their predictions on player performances. Like, he's like, well, here, make sure you guys are in your seats for this one. Mike Trout will be frustrated and demand a trade by midseason. And I'm like, come on. Do they not even know this guy? Right. Do they not know him at all? Do they not After he's realize been the they're talking so long? about the first place Los Angeles Angels? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Sons of bitches. I know. I know. All I right. Mean, that, Any that final stuff, thoughts? That, that, stuff that, that stuff has gotten old. That re- yeah. really has. About, yeah. And, and you know, he has one game where he goes to the, the multi-homer and the next day, obviously. But that's our, yeah. that's our society today, especially on social sure. media. It's like, it's all about the yeah. clicks and the likes and all that shit. And, um, yeah. It's just stupid to listen to. Look, if if Mike had a history of saying, "I man, I I want to I want to win. I want to go out, and if not, I want to get traded." That's different. He's never once right. said that. He's never once requested it. Right. Um. He just wants the team to be better and play better, and he wants to stay healthy. Number one. Uh, yeah. And so it's like, why can't you just leave it at that? It's like I don't understand. I I really don't understand why the the media landscape gets to the point of trying to and i guess it's probably because of fantasy sports and betting lines and all that stuff but of course uh, of wanting to like oh this guy should go over here and this guy should go over here and it's like maybe the guy doesn't fucking want to i mean at the end of the day what if he just doesn't want to and he's happy where he's at god forbid you know we right we, we celebrate someone who is thrilled where he's at, wants to perhaps be an angel for the rest of his career, one team guy. Uh, is that so bad? I mean, 
baseball is not being hurt by Mike Trout not being in the playoffs. And I don't mean that from the standpoint of, oh, it's fine that the Angels haven't gotten the playoffs, or it's fine that Mike Trout hasn't gotten the playoffs. Baseball will continue to move forward. Baseball will happen. There's 30 teams, yeah. 162 uh, game schedule mm-hmm. for six plus months, plus the postseason. The world is not going to stop just because Mike Trout doesn't get to the postseason. So quit wishing that yeah. he's on a different team uh, <laughs> just because it fits your narrative or your excitement or whatever the case may be. It's like, it, it, it's just dumb. When he gets to What's that fun? point, if he does get to that point, he wants to trade. Good. Good for him. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. I, I totally yeah. get it. I would support him 100% because I'd love to see him win. But it's like, I would too. why are we trying to you know put a square peg in a round hole with this goddamn thing? It doesn't yeah. seem like it was all that long ago when we used to lament and bash players that would leave, yeah. right? And ask the question, what happened to guys that would stick around with their franchise for their whole career? And where's the loyalty? And where's the, yeah, you know, the Magic Johnsons? And where's the, you know, whatever? The, like, G- the Jeters and the Cal Ripkins. Right. Yeah. Like, where are those? Why is everybody so quick to leave and free agency has ruined sports and blah, blah, blah. And now it's, the pendulum has swung the other way. It's like, oh. why is this guy still there? Get him out of there. Why we is don't he want loyal? To... Yeah. Yes. What's wrong, what's wrong yeah. with what's him? What's wrong with this guy? <laughs> Jeez, Louise. Uh, Crazy. All right. Final thoughts, gentlemen. Anything? I think I just provided them. All right. <laughs> Any so, uh, predictions for this weekend? This series? Drunk this weekend. I'll say. <laughs> Amen same. To that. Same. I'll say two and one angels. Mm. That's my prediction. I don't predict, Chuck. So I don't. I because I suck at it. So that's why it could be like a it could be a player performance. Okay. Nolan Shanuel, uh continues his streak through the weekend. All right. His on base streak. I yep. love it. I love yep. that he continued the streak with the hit by a pitch. Yeah. That was awesome. <laughs> being thrown into the game midway through and everybody was stressing on X like does this mean that he might lose the streak? Oh, that was Dude, funny. I saw my I saw my first Ethan Wash tweet the other day <laughs> when that happened like really? We're already at the Ethan Wash <laughs> like I mean for putting him in late in the game. Mm-hmm. When he for what I mean, well, gosh, give me a break. <laughs> hey, my my final thought is uh I like Jeff's coordination of foreign or four and van halen's second album with the four mm. so you got it him. right yes sir They're nailed four it and two four and They're two four and two that's amazing yep. that, that is great in the code early yeah. i like yep. it i yeah. like it's it. not early it's an hour and eight minutes into this damn thing <laughs> <laughs> i just woke up <laughs> <laughs> all right well we thank all of you for listening to episode 33 of the angels win podcast like subscribe crush that subscribe button um on behalf of victor rojas and chuck richter i am jeff stoddart have a good week and go angels <laughs>